3D printing is amazing. You can design objects to do whatever it is you need them to do. Well, you can't. I can't. Like, the promise of 3D printing is that you can design objects to do whatever it is you need them to do. But the reality is that learning how to design objects from scratch using CAD programs is actually pretty time consuming. But what if there was a way that you could take objects that other people had designed and kind of mush them together so you could get like a lot of the benefits of 3D printing without all the time consuming learning how to design them from scratch. And that feature might actually just be built into the slicer software that you're already using. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The story of today's video starts with this. And uh, in case it's not obvious, this is a 3D printed pod for a Cadix Vista that I'm going to stick on top of, can you see this? Okay, I'm gonna stick it on top of this car right here and I'm gonna make an FPV RC crawler. But that's not what this video is about because I knew that I wanted to stick a video transmitter on top of this car. And I went out and I searched on Thingiverse and Yegi and printables for existing pods to do what I wanted it to do. But I couldn't find exactly what I wanted. You see, the problem is that this pod is designed for an airplane. And the difference between an airplane and a ground vehicle is that an airplane is always going fast and there's always wind to cool the Vista. For a ground vehicle, the Cadix Vista or the DJI 03, any of the digital video transmitters, and frankly, even the higher powered analog video transmitters, they need a fan on them to keep them cool. And there is nowhere here to mount a fan. Well, actually that's not true. There is somewhere here to mount a fan, but this isn't what I downloaded from the internet. Wanna see? This is what I originally downloaded from the internet. Uh, and by the way, I'll have links to these files in the video description. Thank you to the original designers of these 3D prints. I couldn't have done this without you. Literally, I couldn't have done this without you. <laughs> And so with this sled has mounting points for the Cadix Vista and it's got mounting points for the camera and it's got mounting points for the antenna. It is nearly perfect, but it's not 100% perfect because it doesn't have a mounting point for the fan. So I went out and I searched and found this, which is a pod that includes a fan mount. In fact, this is what the fan mount looks like with a fan mounted on it. And the idea is that we take this pod and we put this fan on top and then voila, we have a fan mounted very nicely to keep our Vista cool. But these are two separate 3D prints. And what I wanted you to take from this video is that your slicer probably has tools built in that will let you sort of remix this stuff without all of the hassle of just like cut it up and stick it together but in software, so that when you do a final 3D print, then it'll just be a nice piece. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. I wanna acknowledge that I made almost this exact same video, something like three years ago, using a tool called Mesh Mixer. But I'm remaking the video today because Mesh Mixer is a little bit clunky. Well, it's a lot clunky to use. It's pretty cumbersome. And the tools that are built into modern slicers, software that you may be using already, they're a lot easier to use and it's a lot more seamless. So the slicer that I'm gonna be using in this video is Orca Slicer. If you have Bamboo Slicer or Prusa Slicer, then they have the exact same tools. And there may be similar tools in other slicers like Cura, uh, I'm not sure about that. Bamboo Slicer, of course, is what I'm using because I have the Bamboo A1C printer and it's just a really fantastic freaking printer that makes this kind of thing so, I just banged out so many of these freaking things in perfect quality quality just bleh, so fast. It was really amazing. Um, but we're not here to talk about the printer. We're here to talk about this software. And this software is free to download and can work with just about any printer that you might happen to have. So if you're considering getting a new slicer, it might be worth looking at Orca Slicer. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna combine these two objects into one object. And it's not as simple as like, eh, just there you go, right? You see, I'm getting a warning here. Vista mount full fixed STL is too close to others. It's not happy that I've got these two things overlapping. What I need to do is control click to select both of them and then right click and assemble. And that will combine those two objects into a single assembly. What I can then do is go to objects here on the left 
and I can see this assembly, and I can see these two objects that are parts of the assembly. And I'm just going to pick Vista Mount Full Fixed. Actually, I'm going to do one thing first. To make my life easier, first I'm going to click on the Sky Hunter pod, and I'm going to right click and center it on the plate. And that's just going to help me line these things up if I can center them both on the plate, just because they're both symmetrical. Uh, it'll save me a little bit of manual shuffling them around. Then I'm going to click the Vista mount, and I'm going to right-click and center it on the plate. And now you can see we're almost there. We're not quite there. Um, actually, we're more there than I thought. Because one of the things I'm concerned with is that these screw holes right here line up perfectly so that the Vista mounting lines up. And we can see that's not quite right. So I'm going to click on the Vista mount, and I'm going to click the Move tool. And then I'm going to use these arrowheads, and I'm just going to drag and try and get those screw holes lined up as perfectly as I can. It's a little bit annoying because I can't see down through the top, but so be it. I think I've got them pretty perfectly lined up. Great. I could drag this left, right, up, down, and put it exactly where I want it. And in fact, I'm not quite done yet because the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure there's enough room between here and here to fit the Vista. And I'm worried that the existing mounting studs, if you will, are going to get in the way. So I'm going to grab the blue arrow and drag this up on the z-axis. Oh, no, I can see. Here's the, here's the, here, let me just drag this up here. Here's the studs, the mounting studs, if you will, for the bosses. Are they called bosses? Mounting bosses? For the original, for the fan mount. And we definitely don't want any space here between the fan. We don't want a gap there. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go like this and drag that down until it just contacts. Is it contacting? It looks like it is. It looks like we've got overlap there. Perfect. That seems about right to me. That is good to go. There's more that we can do here. So I want that's sort of how you munch two things together to make them into one thing. And it's great because as long as you can find two things that are roughly what you want, like it's not the prettiest way to put them together, but it freaking works. It freaking works beautifully. But that's putting things together. What about taking them apart? When you have those two tools, the world is your freaking oyster. The other tool I want to introduce you to is the slice tool or the cut tool. And that's right here. And if I hit cut, it is going to draw a plane on the, on the object. And it's going to cut that object into two pieces. And then I can either move those pieces and print them separately. Like, for example, if I didn't like the fact that this, look at this lid, this, all those overhangs on the lid, what a mess. I could cut that lid off and move it over and do it separately. Actually, the creator of the print actually has a separate print for the lid. If you want to do that, you don't have to cut it. But it's just an example. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag this plane upward. I don't want to rotate the plane. I want to drag it upward. There we go. I'm going to drag this plane upward. So I'm just cutting off the very top of this antenna bracket. And then I'm going to keep the lower part and not keep the upper part. And I'm going to perform the cut. And now, a hole. Now we just chop that thing off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to import this DJI antenna mount. Right? Here we go. We're going to rotate that 180 degrees and then control click. No, I don't want to escape. There we go. Control click, right click, assemble. We're going to center this up and then we're going to move. We're going to drag it up and we're going to drag it over and drag it down and we'll just put it right into place, right into place here as neatly as we can. And how do we want to do this? I don't think we want some overlap here, right? I think we'd want some overlap here just to make sure everything is nice and like secure. So we'll just move that as close as we can. To, oh, that's nice. Now, there's still something I don't like about this. And that brings us to the third thing you can do to allow you to design things without having to become a freaking CAD designer. And that is this. That's the Add Primitive tool. So we're going to click on the whole assembly here. I thought it was a tool up here, but it looks like it's actually only under the right-click menu. Weird. Okay. We're going to right-click. 
add primitive, and we can add a cube, a cylinder, a sphere, or a cone. So in order to fill in this hole, I guess I would add a cylinder, add primitive, cylinder, there it is. It has appeared as part of this assembly. That's nice, has it? Can I, can I, do I need to like, control click, control, control click, right click, assemble? Yes, now it's part of the assembly. And then what I can do is I can click on that cylinder and we'll start by using the scale tool to scale it down, right? To an approximate size. And then we'll hit the move tool and we'll just move it up and move it over. Oh, shoot, I don't wanna move the whole thing. I just wanna move the cylinder. We'll move it over and we'll try and get that lined up nice and good. Oh, that's pretty close, actually. Let's scale that just a little smaller. Get it to like the inside. Yeah, and then we'll bring that up just a little bit. Oh yeah, oh gosh. Oh, 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 look how good that is. Look how good that is. And then I'll highlight that cylinder and control C, control V to make a second cylinder. And we'll just hit the move tool and we'll drag that shoop right over here. Look what we've done. We've made something. We've made something. We've made something completely original that never existed in the world. And I didn't have to open Tinkercad or Fusion 3D. I didn't have to learn how to do CAD. I just made it. I made it by munging together things that other people made. But hey, basically anything you could do by cutting up and gluing together real world objects, now you can cut them up and glue them together inside your slicer. And I say now you can. And I know that people who are watching this are gonna be going, yeah, duh, Bardwell, we've been doing this forever. We knew about this. And I did too. I made a video about this three years ago, but it was super clunky. And this is the first time I've tried this since I got my Bamboo A1C and started using Bamboo Slicer and Prusa Slicer and Orca Slicer, and I thought it was worth making a video about. If you wanna try to do this, I'll put a link to Orca Slicer down in the video description below. It doesn't just support the bamboo printers, like Bamboo Slicer mostly just supports bamboo printers. Even if you're using a Prusa or a third-party printer, Orca Slicer is pretty freaking cool. Maybe I'll make a separate video about that. I also, I think I'm gonna put a card on screen well, number one, to my review of the Bamboo A1C, it's a freaking amazing 3D printer. I freaking love it. But also to um, my video where I tried to learn how to do CAD modeling using Fusion 360. It was super fun. But then my Fusion 360 license ran out and I got busy with other things and I never really got into it. So I'm really glad these tools exist. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.